next event is the steeplechase. The water jump, of course, the most famous obstacle to be taken seven times. Panetta at the top of the caption there is the defending champion from Italy. Sang, of course, one of those world-class canyons. Kariuki, the Olympic champion. It was something of a controversial selection for Kenya. That's how good uh, they are. Tom Hanlon of Britain in fine form. Meltzer, the former European champion. And Moses Kiptanui, the favorite, number 7-1-1 from Kenya, of course. 15 runners, this is uh, Francesco Panetto, the world and European champion, who's flirting with the idea of running the marathon, but concentrating on the steeplechase for the moment. He would appear to be the big threat. Kariuki, the Olympic champion, World Cup winner, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, but only fourth in the Kenyan trials, which are a bit more like an Olympic final in this event. Moses Kiptanui, the former footballer who's broken through from nowhere in this particular event this year to be the world leader. That water is deepest nearest the barrier. The idea is to put one foot on the barrier, one foot in the water where it's uh, pretty shallow and away. The World Championship steeplechase final and a fascinating race here in prospect. The three Kenyans obviously very, very dangerous because, uh, well, in Kenya, it seems really that just about every kid on the block can steeplechase. They've got five of this year's world top ten. They had a 1-2 at the Olympic Games, but they've never yet won a World Championship because it was Patrice Ill for West Germany in 1983 and Panetta, the leader here in the early stages, who won in 1987 before his own adoring fans in Rome. Tom Hanlon of Britain up there in second place and the Kenyans just uh, biding their time for the moment, though Kip Tanui looks as if he is aching to make some sort of forward move already. Yes, and there he is on personal best. He's the fourth fastest in the field, but he's the fastest this year. Over the water jump, no problems. Uh, last year in the European Championships, one of the poles, I think it was Zakowski, came to grief in the water jump. Your technique's got to be right. If you hit those barriers, which are 78 metres apart, by the way, you know all about it because they are four inches thick. And in the last World Championship final, Kip Kemboy of Kenya fell. Panetta won. Hanlon, who's been in great form, the British athlete up there in second place at the moment and running with confidence. He's yet to make a big impact at championship level, but might be ready to do so here. Kip Tanui is in third place. Van Dyke, Belgium, is in fourth. Then comes the Olympic champion, Kariuki, in fifth place. Brahmi who is an emerging steeplechaser, runs well on the Grand Prix from Algeria in the all-green strip. And then Kariuki, the third of the Kenyans, who uh, was selected on the basis of his championship record despite finishing fourth in the trials. And then the government tried to insist that he shouldn't be in the team, but the uh, athletics officials had their way in the end, and Kar Kariuki gets a chance to go for the world title. Still Panetta. The man the Italians call the Diesel, chugging away up front with Hanlon right behind him and Kip Tanui in third place. Yes, it's interesting tactics, the Kenyans. They were very slow at the start. They're now coming through, of course. They're bunching quite ominously third through to fifth. Panetta happy to set a pace. We've often seen him, of course, in major races in the past. There is a faller here. It didn't affect the leaders, of course, but just shows how carefully you've got to watch those barriers. And the two fallers there were Meltzer, wearing number 501, the German, and the other one who came down, wearing number 162, Graham Fell of Canada. Those two going down, and that just underlines the point we were making, that uh, maybe they were just unsighted going into the barrier, miscalculated it, 
or were trying to make a forward move at that stage and got it wrong. And of course, one of the problems the steeplechasers have, it's not like the high hurdles where you can have a stride pattern. You have to be able to meet the barrier off either leg because it's so far between each one. So drama already here, but not for Panetta out in front. What kind of form is he in? Is he going to upset the Kenyans and frustrate them again as he did in Rome? Kip Tanui in second place who only ran his first steeplechase on June the 7th, world junior champion at 1,500 metres last year. Kip, Kip Tanui then second, Kariuki is third, then Sang in fourth, the three Kenyans running together, Hanlon Britain doing nothing wrong in fifth, Sahire and Brahmi, the North Africans up there too, and Van Dijk in seventh place. Gap back to Cariosi, Cariosi of Italy and the rest of them already just beginning to be cut adrift, led by Dima, the American. Yeah, well, we've seen Panetta, of course, front run before. There was his amazing run in the 1986 European Championships where he led by some 40 metres at the bell and uh, really collapsed and only got the silver medal. But this is not as extravagant. He's learned from those sort of early days and this time he's setting up a sensible pace at the front. But it's fast enough to burn off some of the lesser runners in this field. Not fast enough, though, for the three Kenyans, all poised ominously just behind him. A little less than three laps to go. And the Kenyans here. Well, is it going to be a clean sweep from there? One, two, three at the moment. Kip Tanui is in the lead. But it's Kip Tanui one. In second place now is Kariuki and then Sang. Those three. Sahire of Morocco's gone fourth, Panetta seems to be dropping back, Brahmi's gone fifth, Tom Hanlon's falling back to of Great Britain and he's uh, going backwards all the time now and looks completely beaten and all out at this stage, he will not be collecting any medals. Still these three Kenyans, lovely fluent steeplechasers and of course in Kenya a lot of the boys have to run to school every day, I wonder if that's where they pick up the idea because it's like kind of cross-country converted to track this event. Kip Tanui in first place. Kariuki is in second. Sang is in third. But those North Africans look pretty dangerous. Sahire, who's much improved, and so too is Brahmi. Panetta, and what a great run to get back in touch from Brian Diemer, the Olympic bronze medalist of 1984, who looked to be struggling at one stage, but he's right back up there with them. It slowed down. It has slowed down. They must uh, respect, I think, Sahiri too, because Sahiri is a 1,500-metre runner. He got a medal in the African Championships last year, and if you get a medal in the African Championships at any running event, you're pretty good. Kip Tanui loves to front run. I have to tell you that uh, in a recent race on the Grand Prix, when he looked on world record schedule, he hit a barrier on the far side, and that may well have cost him the world record. In fact, talking about those African championships, 1,500 metres, I said Sahiri got a medal. Yes, it was a silver medal, and it was Kip Tanui, in fact, who won the gold. So he's got some speed. In fact, he won the World Junior title last year at 1,500 metres as well. And he's running this very, very confidently. He's only had a handful of races at this discipline, but he's running this like a veteran, looking round and looking ominously comfortable. Kip Tanui, the 19-year-old or so, we're told. Kariuki so experienced, though, at championship level as they take the bell and Sang in third place is the fourth fastest of all time. Still with them is Brahmi of Algeria. Looks to be between those four, gap back to Sahire and then Dima who's lost touch again after his brave run. On the back straight for the final time and this looks like it might be a Kenyan gold, silver and bronze but who gets what and is Brahmi got something of a shock in store for these Kenyans. Kip Tanui still leading Kariuki is the challenger, Sang still third, now Brahmi is beginning to get on the scene, Kariuki just dropping back, Kip Tanui trying to wind it up, but he's got to get his stride right for the water jump for the finally time, time and he does that. Still Moses Kip Tanui is the teenage discovery going to take the gold medal in his first season in the event, Sang's gone into second place, Kariuki's dropped back, Kip Tanui, Sang is the challenger now on the outside, but Kip Tanui, using his 1500 metre speed, comes away, he's going to be the world champion, Sang gets the silver medal, Brahmi, great run, bronze for him to separate the Kenyans, Kariuki comes in in fourth place, then Dima fifth, Kariosi in sixth place, the Italian, Panetta is only seventh, uh, Van Dijk 
will be in eighth place. Those are the leading eight. But the story is that this young man who ran his first steeplechase on June the 7th at the Armed Forces Championships in Kenya, less than three months later, he is the champion of the world. Another astonishing story from Tokyo. Well, just like in the 10,000 metres where the Kenyans had gold and silver, they've done it again in the steeplechase. And I wonder what odds the bookmakers would have given you on that. About 20 to 1 on, I would think. Well, coming off the last hurdle, the pace had been rather slower than expected, I think. Kipta Nui just happy to control the pace from the front. He knew he'd got the speed. His uh, teammates Sang and Karayuki behind him. And then Brahmi, absolutely delighted to be able to split these Kenyans. Karayuki fades, and really perhaps not justifying his selection, though fourth place in the World Championship is pretty good, isn't it? Kipta Nui sprints away to win from Sang. And what a great day for Algeria, with Bulmerka taking gold in the women's 1500 metres and this unexpected bronze for Brahmi here in the steeplechase. <laughs> Well, there they are together, the two Kenyans, Kiptanui and Sang there on the outside. And Kiptanui's flat speed was absolutely decisive. And doesn't he look comfortable? Doesn't he look relaxed? I've got a feeling that the world record is going to fall to this fellow and soon.